Hey coders, welcome to Coding Coding with NJ, where you are currently watching fifth video in the Laravel with Livewire series. Now this series is project oriented beginner friendly series in which we are learning concepts of Laravel by implementing an e-commerce website with both its front end and admin side. In our previous lecture, we implemented all the actions associated with the category controller except for the deletion of the resource. We will be working mainly on the front end and that doesn't mean just styling the front end. Rather, we will be learning different blade directive and different ways to display the data in the browser. So let's get started. Well, we are going to start off with this index page. So currently what is happening is that the data that has been displayed by this index.blade.php is actually an array which consists of different objects and each object represents a row in the categories table. So if you notice these square brackets over here at the beginning and end, that confirms that an array is being displayed. So our first task is that we are going to loop through this array and display all of these objects one by one on the browser so that later on we can apply different styles to them. So let's get started with that. Okay, so this is the, the current state of index.blade.php and if you notice that the variable which is an array that we have received, we are simply dropping that array on the browser and it's displaying the data in one go. So now what we have to do is that we have to comment this out and iterate through this array and display its elements on its own in the browser. Now to display an array, we have a loop called for each loop in PHP. So we have an equivalent directive in Blade, which represents that for each loop. So let's start off with that for each loop. So at for each. Now over here, we have to provide the variable that we want to iterate over. So categories is category. So I forgot to mention this for each loop ends with an end for each loop directive. Now between these two beginning and ending directives, we have to define the logic which displays this category data. So, so for the time being, let's dump everything in the browser just like we did with the categories array and see what's being displayed. Refresh. Now as you can see, there is almost no change except for the starting and ending square brackets have been removed. That's because now we are not dumping the whole array in the browser, rather we are individually dumping the categories or the array elements on the browser. So let's go and change that. Now since we know this categories contains all of these columns, but we are interested in just displaying the ID, name and status, this part. So what we are going to do is that, let's delete this. Let's create a div, let's give it a name, class name, Category and within this div, let's create a paragraph which is going to display the category ID. Another paragraph is going to display name. Another paragraph which is going to display status. Okay, so category ID, name, and status. So what we are going to do is that we are going above this for each loop and at the top we are going to create another div category titles and in this div we are going to create one paragraph with the name id another paragraph with the name name and one more paragraph with the name status so these are going to be turned into the headings so this is name, sorry, ID, name and status. So these will eventually be turned into the headings and each category related data will be displayed in one row horizontally. So it will give us an impression of a table. But since this is going to be done through the styling, so currently each of these are on separate rows. Okay. So this is one way to display data using for each loop. Now, what if we didn't have any data to display over here? In that case, what we normally do is that let's put everything, let's remove everything that we have currently and we are going to use another directive which is if directive. So this is if condition is to display this but we need the if with else block. So let's remove this if else and if select this one. So now we are going to say if categories 
That means if there is data in the categories, this array is not empty. In that case, this is if block should execute. And we are going to paste back everything that we previously had within this if block. So if there is data in the categories, in that case, this should all be displayed. However, if our categories array is empty, in that case, we want to display another message in the browser, which is no categories to display. So currently, you can see there is no change in the browser because we have data in the categories variable. So let's go and change that. But before that, notice that we don't have any paragraph which says no categories to display. Now, what we are going to do is that we are going to our category controller and in our index action over here, after this, what we are going to do is that we are manually setting this categories variable to an empty array. Now, an empty array is being sent to the index.blade.php. Now, hopefully, we will only see this paragraph and nothing else. Let's go and test it out. Yes, you can see. No categories to display. Okay, so we have successfully handled a scenario where we don't have any categories data in the categories table. Now, this is a verbose way of doing the job. The Laravel framework is very graceful and very robust. So it has given us an alternative which is less verbose. And that directive is called for else. This for else contains an additional block which is called empty. So this block will execute if the array which we are looping over is an empty array, then this empty block will execute. So what we need to do is that we are going to this for each block and let's start with this div which contains the actual data. Cut it and paste it in the for else block. But over here, let's put the categories as category. And for the empty block, let's move cut this and put it over here. Let's comment out everything if up to end if block. Okay, so this is for else loop, which is iterating over categories variable. And each item or each element of this categories array is being referred to as category variable. Then within this if block, we are displaying an, a div which contains the three paragraphs. First one is going to display category ID, then second one category name and category status. Then we have a blade directive called empty, which contains a paragraph which displays no categories to display text. So this empty block will execute. If we don't have anything to display, that means our categories array is empty array. Otherwise, this div will be displayed. So currently we are sending an empty array and as you can see we are getting the same message no categories to display however now let's go back to our category controller and remove this line now we have data in the categories array refresh and as you can see we are getting the same data the only problem is that we don't have our first div which represents the heading or title of each of those columns that are being displayed so we are going to solve this by well, let's first think about where can we put them. So previously what we did was we put it inside the if block but before this for each loop. Now since we don't have anything like if block over here. So if we display this block outside the for else block. Let me cut it and let's put over here. So what will happen is that when we don't have any data to display, we will be seeing this message, but we will also be able to see the headings or titles of those columns. And we don't want that to happen. When there is no categories to display, why should the titles be displayed there? So we don't want this div to be placed over here. Because that means it has to be there all the time, even when our array is empty. So let's cut it from there and let's put it inside the for else block. Now what this will do, it will display this block as many times as there are elements in this array. Let me show you. So as you can see, we have this div id name status, its values. Then again, the same div id name status, then its values and this id name status. So it's being repeated. We don't want that repetition. 
we only want to display it just one time so for that we have luckily another blade directive so what we are going to do is that let's cut it and use another blade directive which is called once i don't know why it brings this protection so it's once once and end once so this once directive whatever is inside this is going to be displayed just once per rendering of a page so paste break the same div now this div will only be displayed once and the rest will be repeated so we have this div id name status then the values one women inactive then another two main inactive then third column values three boys and active that means once directive is doing its job now since this is an admin site that means we should be able to manipulate these categories over here so basically we want buttons one button when click will take us to the page which displays that specific category in more detail that is we should be redirected to show.blade.php another one when clicked on it it will take us to the page where we can edit that category that is edit.blade.php the third one when clicked will delete the category from the database table we should also have another button which when clicked allows us to add new category in the database table so currently we don't have any links on the page we are manually jumping between those pages by changing the address in the address bar such as if you want to go to create page we are manually changing the address in the address bar so rather than doing that we want links on our page which takes us to these different pages so over here we want to include a link which will allow us to add new category that is it will take us to the create.blade.php so let's do that first let's go at the top after this h1 heading let's include an anchor tag add new category okay now as far as the href is concerned we have a blade directive through which we can define the whole address so let's start with manually displaying the url which in our case is http localhost port number is 8080 then we have admin and then categories and then create now click on it so we got redirected to this create page now we have statically defined this url now suppose our domain name changes or something else changes in the url that means we have to again come back to this page in all the other pages where we have defined this url and change that url as well so laravel gives us an alternative which is more dynamic so let's remove this part so this part that i removed is the domain name the rest is called path so so let me cut this part and include a directive called url and place that break now what this url helper function does is that it will take whatever is the domain name and attach this path to it so it's dynamically creating the url the dynamic part being the domain name the rest is static this path is static but it's better than the one we had earlier so at least a portion of it is dynamic let's refresh now the portion of it being dynamic is that now if i change the port number let's say i don't have to go back and change the url because that port number was part of domain and domain is taken care of by this url helper function provided by the laravel now since this is partially dynamic what if we want to make it completely dynamic that is even if the path part of the url is changed we don't have to come back over and make changes over here and reflect those changes over here so if that's our aim in that case we have to use another helper function which is called route and over here we don't have to provide the path rather the route name for the action that we have defined in our web routes file so the route name that we gave to our create.blade.php file was category dot create let's go back refresh and let's try to click over here now we got redirected back to our create.blade.php page that means it's working now this way no matter how many changes we make to our url we don't have to make any changes in index.blade.php file because we are not using the url itself or portion of it rather we are using the route names and route names will take care of any changes that has been made to the url
Okay. So this is one part done. Now we need to attach those three actions that we want to be associated with each of those categories that we are displaying. So what we are going to do is that we are going to create another paragraph and over here we are going to create three links. So let's keep the href empty for the time being and let's give it title or caption. Let's make it details. Another anchor tag. Let's keep href empty for this one as well. Let's give it caption edit and third one is delete. We can already see details edit and delete. So when we click on this delete page, it should take it should take us to the show.blade.php. When we click on this edit page, it should take us to edit.blade.php. And we and when we click on this delete page, it should delete this category. Now since we haven't yet defined this delete action in the controller, so we are going to keep this empty for the time being. But for the other two, we have to use the route. For the details, it's called show category show. Now since this route takes a route parameter, so we have to provide a second parameter with square brackets and the route name is category and let's give it the value, this one, category ID. We can put the whole category as well. It will express the ID because of the dependency injection and type hinting. Let's go and test it out first. So let's click on women and show its details. So we have been redirected to the women category with the ID 1. Let's go back. Let's click on boys with ID 3. ID 3, ID 3, boys. Okay. So over here we need a link which will take us back to index.blade.php but we will get to that part when we are working on this page, the show.blade.php. Okay. Now let's define the edit one. For the edit, the route is going to be category dot edit now this also takes a route parameter so let me copy this and paste it over here refresh click on edit now we are being shown the edit page for the women's category let's go back let's click on this girl and again, we have been redirected to the edit page for this girls category with the ID 4. Okay, so now the only link that is left is delete one. Now, since we haven't yet defined the action associated with deleting a specific category in the categories table, so we are going to keep this delete hash ref empty as well. We will revisit delete link once we have defined the controller action associated with deleting a specific resource. Now with that, we are done with all the logic associated with the front end. The only thing left is styling these contents. So let's start working on that. Now the first thing that we want to do when it comes to styling is that we want some space around these edges. Now since this portion, the index.blade.php is being inserted into the yield directive, which is defined in the layout.blade.php. So let's go and revisit that. over here it's being inserted in let's remove these comments now if you notice this yield directive is inside a section which has been given a class name content so let's give this content section some padding this way we don't have to define the padding for the different pages which we are going to insert into this yield section because the padding is defined for the content section this one so let's open layout.scss and let's go down and in this content section let's define the heading let's give it two ram all around now you can see we have space around the edges so even if we move on to next page we have space around that edge as well okay now let's go back to the index.blade.php. Okay, so we have to associate the link with this category management as well, such that when we click on this category management, we display the index.blade.php page over here as well. So let's go back to our layout.blade.php. And over here in the 
category management let's define the route which is category dot index refresh now click on category management and we got redirected to index.play.php okay now let's define a scss file for the index.play.php so let's go to our resources folder over here we have a folder named scss within which we have a folder named admin so let's create a new new file index scss now before we write any styling code over here let's link this file with our index.blade.php file okay let's go up and at the very top okay let's include the read directive and define the resource which is inside the resources folder then scss folder then admin folder and there we have a file index.scss we need to include this file in the v.config.js file resources scss admin dot index dot scss if you don't include this file in the read config file our application will still work as long as we are in the development environment had we not been in the development environment rather had we been in the production environment and had we not included the link for index.scss file over here then the styling defined in the index.scss file would not have taken effect rather we would have been given an error that this file is missing okay let's close it now let's go to index.scss file let's close the layout file as well now in the index.blade.php file we have h1 then we have one div called category hyphen titles and then we have another one called category and third one is a paragraph let's give it a class name mtp so let's define styles for these classes let's start with h1 text align center text transform capitalize let's give it margin all around not all around just top and bottom uh, top and bottom to rem left and right zero okay that's it for the time being now let's move on to the div category titles and category titles and For both of them, let's first of all display define the display to grid grid template columns. So we have how many columns do we have over here? ID, name, status. So for the first column, let's give it 20%. For the second column, let's give it 40% and name id status and actions okay we have four columns okay first one is 10 percent second 20 percent third also 20 percent and the last one which contains three anchor tags let's give it 50 percent the remaining the reason for giving it more space to the last one because eventually we will turn these into buttons so we want spaces between between these buttons as well therefore we are reserving more space for this last column id name status and we have forgot to define the title for the last one so let's go and do that let's go to the to the category titles and let's define another paragraph with the name actions that's better now let's put some space between each of these categories and since they are all inside their own separate paragraph so let's give it heading top bottom let's give it 0.8 range or 0.7 range for the left and right zero okay that's better now let's give some padding to this add new category as well so you know what i'm not going to define any styling for these ones 
because very soon we will replace all of these links with the components and we are going to define the styles associated with the component within the component itself. So that's why let's not define any styling for these anchors themselves. Now as far as the paragraph is concerned, the next is text transform. I want to capitalize the content. Okay, that's better. And what else? Okay, now we want to capitalize the titles, just the titles. So let's separately define category title because we want only the category title text to be bold font. So font weight 700. Okay. Okay, so far so good. Now we need some space between all of these anchors. That's the only styling that we are going to define for these anchors. So this one is inside the, the category div. So category, but we are interested in the last paragraph. So category, paragraph, column, the last child. Because this category has, I think, four paragraphs. Yeah, four paragraphs. So we are interested in the last child, this paragraph. Okay, so let's define display flex and justify content space. Let's make it evenly good. Now this action seems misaligned. So we want this action to be around over here in the center. So that means for this category titles one, we have to set its text aligned to center as well. Okay, so for the category title, text align center. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. Let's remove this. Let's make it M% colon last child. Text align center. Let's make it P last child. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so we have targeted within this category titles a paragraph, but since there are many paragraphs, so last child, and we want to set its text align property to center. Okay, so for the time being, this is all the styling that we are that we are defining. We need some space around this anchor, but let's not do that. Or shall we do it? If we give some padding top to this category title, then we will have some space between this link and the titles. So let's do that. Let's define margin top. Let's give it one ring. Yeah. Okay. That's it. We are happy with the styling so far. Now let's go and work on the details page. Let's define some styles for this one. Okay. So let's go to our show.blade.php first. Over here, let's do it. So over here, we are dumping the category that we have received. Let's comment this out for the time being. So we have now H1 tag. Now we want a div which is going to display the titles. So let's go to index and copy this div which represents the titles. Copy and paste it over here. So we have ID, name, status, action, the four actions. Let's add one paragraph which says 388 and another paragraph which says updated it. And the last one is actions. So for the contents, let's copy this category div. Paste it over here. Now, after status, we have to add a paragraph which displays created it. So, category created it. Now, P category updated it. Now, as far as the actions are concerned, since we are already seeing the details. So we don't need this link. However, we can keep the edit and delete actions. 
from the details page we can go back to editing it and deleting the page as well and as far as the the link at the top we have to add an anchor tag which will take us back to the index.blade.php so the link name is back and the link is going to be route category index okay so if we click on back we are back to categories page now these are the headings and these are the details then we have two actions edit and delete so let's create a read file let's link it first then we'll create it resources scss admin dot um, show dot scss now let's create this file over here show dot scss okay now if you notice both of our index file and show file both have this heading this h1 so rather than defining the styles for h1 for in all of the separate files what we are going to do is that we are going to define the styles associated with the h1 into the layout file cut now let's go to layout.scss and in this content section since we know it will contain a heading we have a heading already styled go back to index heading is already styled if you go to edit the heading is styled okay now let's close this layout.scss now inside this show let's copy first of all everything from the index.scss so where is yeah this is index.scss let's copy everything and then make the changes let's paste everything into the show.scss and see how the styling has affected okay let's go back to the show page okay so no effect resources scss at oh okay this admin slash show.scss okay that's horrible okay so now let's go to show.scss and how many columns do we have now two four six six columns so we have to go to where we were defining our grid let's make it repeat this time we have six columns and for each we are associating one error that's better okay do we need any further changes no we are all set okay that's it we are done with the show one as well now let's work on the edit one okay let's go to edit dot play dot php now this edit is actually a form so h1 is already styled let's remove these comments now as far as the form is concerned we have put every input field inside a div called form group so basically we have to define some basic styling for the form so rather than giving this file name edit.blade.php let's give it the name form.blade.php sorry not um, blade.php form.scss so we are going to define a style file Let's give it name edit create form dot scss. So we are going to define the styling for edit form and the create forms. Edit create form. Now let's go to edit and link this scss file with this one. Edit resources scss admin slash edit create form dot scss okay now let's define styling for the form let's give it width um 85 percent of wherever it's being displayed 
Now within this farm, we have each of those input fields inside a div named farm group. So let's define some styling for the farm group. Since we are giving width 80%, so margin is going to be auto for the farm group. Let's let's give it some border to see if the changes are being applied or not. So border solid one pixel black. Okay. So changes are being applied. Now we have to define styling for the farm group. So farm for the farm group. Let's give it display is grid, grid template columns. For the label, let's give it width of 20% and the second one 80%. Let's squeeze the width from 80 to 60. That's better. Now we have to define some further styling. Now let's give padding to each arm group. So top bottom 0.5 frame, left right 0. Okay, that's better. Let's give each farm group some height. So the height is going to be... Let's make it 2 rem and see how it affects. Okay, so the height has been squeezed. Let's make it... Four rings. Yep, that's better. Now we have to work on the submit button. We have to bring it in the center and increase its uh, length. So to increase its width, first of all, we have to understand why this button is shorter than these ones. Now the reason for this submit button to be relatively much shorter than the rest of the input elements is that the farm group in which this input of type submit exists contains only one child, that is this input button. However, each of these two farm groups contains two children. So we have defined grid template column property for the first child to occupy 20% and the second child to occupy 80%. Now for the last one, since this is the first child, so it's only occupying 20%. So to fix that, what we are going to do is that first of all, let's target the last element. So parent last child. Let's set its display property to flex. Okay, now, now let's target the input which is inside this last farm group. Let's give it width of, let's give it 40%. Okay, and margin auto. Okay, so we are happy with the, the width of the button. Now we have to give it the height which is same as these two elements. So, so to do that, let's give the last child itself the same height that we have assigned to these ones that is four rings and for the input let's give it height 100 percent okay that's better now the reason for defining the height again over here is that the moment we change the display property from grid to flex somehow it removed this height property that we were setting for the farm group for this one as well. So we had to redefine this height and then for the input which is inside this last farm group we have to separately define the width for it 40% margin R2 and height 100% of the parent which is this last child that is the last farm group. And now we have finally got the width that we wanted for the submit button. Now we want to give this button the same color that we have in the theme this one over here. Now since the colors are defined in the layout .scss file over here. So what we are going to do is that we are going to remove these colors from this layout file and create a separate file underscore colors dot scss. Paste them over here. Now we have to include this file in the layout as well as our show.scss file. So let's import this first in the colors.scss, just colors. Okay, let's copy this. 
so it's working so that means nothing has been broken now let's go to edit create farm and import this file over here as well okay now for the background color for the button let's give it what were the color names primary color okay now for the border hmm, let's remove the border okay let's remove the outline as well outline none and border radius 5 pixels let's give it some box shadow for the horizontal offset 5 pixels for the vertical offset and as far as the blur is concerned let's make it 5 pixels as well and for the color let's give it primary give it primary color and see how it has affected uh, let's give it gray color okay that's better now we need to bring this in the center the label and we need some cutting but we don't actually need to do that because once we remove this outline for the farm then we won't be able to see that these two have been squashed together okay let's remove the border yes let's give it some round edges and bring these labels in the center centrally aligned and some space between them so so within this farm group let's target the labels and for each of these labels set its display to flex then align item center okay that's better now let's give it some heading to the right Let's give it petting right one gram. Okay, we need to increase the width for the first child in the grid and decrease the width for the second one so that the whole label comes in single row. Okay, so let's make it 30 and 70. Okay, that's better. Now let's give these some rounded edges and put some padding at the start of uh, the text in the input fields as well. So let's individually target all the input fields and shall we give it shadow as well. So copy, paste it over here. So border radius 5 pixels, box shadow the same that we have for the submit button okay the reason that the second one has not been affected because this is not an input field rather it's a select one so let's put comma and select okay now let's give the outline color same as primary color so border is none outline color is going to be let's give it outline color primary color okay now let's give some padding padding left one ring okay that's better now one more property which is text transform capitalize much better okay so this is a minimalistic styling we are not going to ponder over further styling this is enough for us now let's move on to we need to define a back button over here as well so let's go to edit um, so before 
this form, let's define an anchor with the back. Now this back will take us where? Copy, test, and it will take us back to the show. So back, and we are again back over here. Back, then we are at index.blade.php. Okay, so we have worked with the details page as well as the edit page as well. Have we defined styling for the create one as well? No, we haven't. So now let's go and work on that one. Now, we don't need to define anything for the create one because if I show you the page create.blade.php this one also has everything included inside the form group divs. So we are going to just link this edit create form.scss file with the create.blade.php file as well. So edit resources scss folder admin folder then edit create edit create form dot scss resources c is missing voila so we are done with the create one as well so we have styled our create form as well hmm. we need to include the back button over here as well uh, shouldn't we because if we decide not to submit a new category then we simply click on the category management okay okay we are done with almost all the styling but i just noticed when we go to the farms the moment we change the width assigned to each of these elements in the grid it affected where this submit button is being placed because for the submit button we are assigning 40 percent to it and for the margins we are assigning it auto that means to its left and right equal space is being left as a margin so it gives us the impression that the submit button is aligned with these two input fields but it's shorter than these two columns so it doesn't look very appealing therefore we have to fix that so here is what we are going to do we are going to give this button same width that we have assigned to these input fields that is 70 percent then instead of setting margin auto we are going to give it margin left 30 percent so this will push the submit button and align it to these input fields but it will stretch out up to this point that will be more appealing so let's go and fix this problem so this is edit create farm and this is where we were assigning width 30% and 70% to each farm group so for, for its last child let's assign the width for this input field to be 70% and for the margin let's convert this into margin left and give it 30% so in total it's occupying 100% okay that looks better This is also better. Okay, so this problem has been fixed. So, okay, so we are done with almost all the actions associated with the front end and its styles, except for these links, the styling these links, because in the upcoming videos, I'm going to convert these links into components. And since I'm going to convert them into components, so there is no point in defining styles for these ones. Each component will include its own styling. So we will define the styling for these ones when we define those components. And the reason, uh, that I haven't yet defined the include one over here is well for that you have to wait for the next tutorial but as far as today's tutorial is concerned we are done with what we set out at the beginning if you like this tutorial please don't forget to comment like subscribe and, and share it's just a one click for you guys but it means so much for me thank you so much